Later on, once again, we will be talking about our formal uh, lectures of Biology 100. And uh, as you know that, uh, uh, and I'm also going to share my screen with you. And you know that we are studying body organization. We are trying to study the body systems in our earlier lecture. I tried to introduce you about the presence of different organ system in our body, how they are connected and how together they create the complexity which is required for the human existence. So there are many, uh, there are many systems, human systems present in our bodies which are working together to keep us alive. Integumentary system, the first one, if you can see my slide, it, co it creates the covering of our bodies. It includes the skin, it includes the hairs, it includes the nails. These things look very, um, I mean, uh, very simple. And we took this thing very much granted. But the integumentary system is doing such a great job for the very much survival of our existence, uh, for, 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 for very much survival of human lives. The muscular system, the system which creates muscles in our body, and the contraction and relaxation of the muscles results in the locomotion and in movement of the body. Then there is a skeleton system, the bones present in our bodies. The presence of the bones within our body not only gives strength to humans, but also helps us to move our bodies from one place to another. Cardiovascular system, another system, it comprises of heart and the blood vessels and the blood. So the cardiovascular system is responsible for the transportation of material from one part of the body to the other. And the heart is a pumping organ which pumps blood from one uh, uh, within the vessels and that transport material from one part to the other. Uh, one of the students, uh, Kumail, is asking that usko awaz nahi aari meri. The rest of the students, students are listening my voice. Well, Kumail, I, I'm sorry. I think the problem is on uh, from your side. Let me let me. Uh, the rest are listening, so it might be the problem from your own side. Okay. So. A uh, cardiovascular system is responsible for the transportation of ingredients from one part of the body to the other. Do you know how there are different ingredients which are required to be transported from one part of the body to the other like oxygen. Oxygen is present in the lungs and from the lungs it is required to be transported to every other part of the body. And that is done because of the blood and the hemoglobin. And the circulatory system is responsible, cardiovascular system is responsible to transport that oxygen to every single cell present in our bodies. The food is assimilated, is consumed from the digestive system, from the intestine. And from the intestine, the food is required to be transported to every other part of the body. And that is done with the help of cardiovascular system. Then the respiratory system, we require oxygen for respiration to produce energy. That oxygen is present in the air and from the air, this oxygen is extracted, is received with the help of a system called respiratory system. It collects oxygen present from the air and then transported that oxygen to the other parts of the body. 
Then there exists a urinary system. The urinary system is responsible for the release and excretion of unwanted waste materials from our bodies. As I told you earlier that the life is all about chemical reactions. The chemical reactions which are going on within our own bodies. Those chemical reactions produce the things which we need to execute the function of life as well as certain byproducts, certain other things which, which, are, no, which are not required to be kept inside our bodies. Those waste materials which are produced over the period of time as a result of biological activity which we call metabolism those extra unwanted materials are required to be disposed of, are required to be expelled from the body. So nature has created a system comprises of kidneys and bladder which extracted and filtered the blood and collect the unwanted waste material out of the blood and send it outside the body using uh, the, uh, uh, by, by creating urine in the form of urine then there exists nervous system which connects different parts of the bodies which connects not only different parts of the body but also create a central controlling mechanism to have a coordination between different systems and to control the functions of the system. It comprises from the brain and the spinal cord and the associated neurons. And then of course there is a reproduction system, the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. And we are not going to study everything. Okay? Like we will be studying quite less number of systems in this semester. And then there exists a digestive system which is required to convert the big undigestible macromolecules because, because whatever the food we are eating, we are eating the food for one purpose to extract or to get energy out of it. But that food is made up of big particles, big molecules. Those big molecules cannot be used within the cells to produce energy. So logically there is a need that once you get that food, you need to break down, you need to digest that big molecules, that macromolecules into smaller components, into smaller molecules. That phenomena of conversion of big molecules into simpler, simpler ones, so you can use them to produce energy. So you can use them to produce energy. This is called as digestion. We will be studying that thing as well in detail. Then there is a lymphatic system. We might not be studying an endocrine system as well, which is which comprises of hormones, which we might not be studying as well. Okay, so this is like a general overview of different systems which are present in our bodies. And those organ systems, when work together, they create they work together in one of the best possible composition. I, I, I use the word Asani Takmeen, best possible composition. And this, they are very much in sync from each other. Failure of any one system or even failure of one organ will result in the failure of total, total, uh, total system as well. And that can lead to the death. So as a opening system uh, sorry there are many diseases which are associated with the dysregulated functions of the organs actually disease occurs when any of the organ system do not work in a way in a normal way or even if one of one organ of any of the organ system is not working in a way it should be 
for example when the heart or the associated components are not working in a normal way it can lead to heart diseases if for example if the blood supply to the heart is restricted because of the blockage because if we eat unhealthy food a lot a food which is rich of cholesterol and other fats which are accumulated within the vessels and it blocks the supply of blood and particularly if they block the supply of the blood to the heart itself that will result in the heart attack and due to the accumulation of these fats within the vessel the blood pressure is is used to stay very high as well so and because of some other error if the heart is failed to to work efficiently the cells will not be able to receive the ingredients well because the heart is responsible to pump oxygen as well as food to the different parts of the body so if anything bad happens to the heart or its function it will lead to a disease and khudana khasta ultimately to death similarly diabetes is another disease which results uh, uh, which appear as a uh, disorder associated with the pancreas i will talk more about the pancreas in the digestive system but the job of the pancreas is to produce insulin and insulin is responsible to manage the level of carbohydrate within our blood when we eat sugar when we eat carbohydrates the insulin helps those free sugars present in the blood they put them together the insulin put those free sugar molecules together and then save save it in liver as well as in the muscles if the insulin is not enough it will not be able to save the free sugar present within our blood it increases the level of sugar within our blood and it will start appearing in the urine as well that is an indication of a diabetes which we call as the sugar and the person is has a high glucose level in the blood and it will lead to other diseases uh, it it's actually mother of many other diseases as well okay it can damage kidney it can damage brain and other things as well so that's that's it for the organ system and then the bmi stuff I, i i will be talking that thing on the on the during the in our lab uh, assignments okay so this is it uh, for the body system <clears throat> the first body system which we are studying the first body system which we are studying i i, I selected a respiratory system to teach you as a first organ system and you can guess the reason why i choose respiratory system as a as a first system which i should teach you because nowadays the world is facing a pandemic covid 19 which uh, appears as a result of a very novel virus called corona virus which affects the respiratory system and the lungs so in order to understand and in order to help you to write your article well i decided to teach you about the human respiratory system as a as our first uh, uh, body system okay so from here on we will be talking about the human respiratory system remember the the term breathing there is a difference between the term breathing and the respiratory system the two things breathing is a mechanical formula is a mechanical sorry is a mechanical way is a mechanical activity which draws air into the lungs and then expels air from the lungs to the outside body so breathing is a mechanical activity 
which helps our body to take oxygen inside our lungs and to expel the gases present within our lungs to the air. So it comprises of two stages. It consists of two parts. The first is taking the gases inside. It is called inhalation or inspiration. Taking the gases in. The other is expelling the gases out. This is called expiration or exhalation. Gases ko by nikala. Expel, expelling and to expel the gases from the lungs. You might also know, it's not a very big deal about it. When you inhale the gases, you are actually taking the oxygen inside of your lungs. The air consists of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide gas and other small uh, percentage of other gases as well. But we require only oxygen for the respiration. We need only oxygen. When we inhale the gases inside our lungs, we are taking all those gases from the air inside our lungs. And from there only oxygen is absorbed. There only oxygen is absorbed. And when we expel the gases from the lungs, lungs expel carbon dioxide gas. Because as a result of respiration, in every single cell of our body, carbon dioxide gas is produced. The carbon dioxide gas from these cells, from these cells, from these cells are collected with the help of the blood, transported to the lungs, and from the lungs it goes out. You need to understand that it's not like a process which is going on without any logical reason because there should be a mechanism which helps our body to draw oxygen inside the lungs and that mechanical mechanism is called as breathing. How it happens? Many people misunderstood. They believe that lungs can contract and lungs can relax. Many people believe like that. It's a lie. It's not Lungs cannot contract itself. Lungs do not contain any smooth muscles. That, but that means lungs cannot contract itself by itself. Lungs could not Lungs are like sponge. If you remember the sponge, the common duster in our classroom, lungs are like that. Think about it. If you put, if, if you contract the sponge, just contract the sponge and place it in that form into the water and release your hands while placing it inside the water. The sponge will start expanding itself and will start absorbing the water within its space. So it gets the water when you release the pressure. If you start contracting, uh, uh, if you start contracting the sponge once again, it will expel the water out of the sponge. If you release the pressure, it will receive the water. If you contract it again, it will expel the water. Exactly in the same way lungs are working. They cannot contract themselves itself. Lung cannot contract itself and lungs cannot expel, uh, expand itself. Lungs are placed in a cavity called chest cavity in our rib cage. Lungs are placed in our rib cage. There is a floor which divides our abdomen, our belly, which divides our there is a floor which divides our chest cavity from the abdomen. That floor is called as the diaphragm. It's like the floor of the chest cavity, and everything is present on that floor. The heart is present here and the lungs are present here. So think about the lungs present on the diaphragm. Diaphragm is the floor of the chest cavity. And then there are ribs. Ribs are like cage. They're like cage. So there is a cage, rib cage out there. And then there is a floor 
is called diaphragm. When ribs contract themselves, when ribs move inward with the help of the muscles, when ribs move inward, ma'am, ribs moves inward and diaphragm, the floor of the chest cavity, it moves upward. So when the diaphragm moves upward and the rib cage moves inward, that reduces the amount of space within the chest cavity. It results in the decrease in the space. So that is why the lungs are contracted. When the lungs are contracted, you can guess what will happen. Whatever the gas is present within the lungs, it will go out. When the ribs moves outward and the diaphragm moves downward, it creates a space within the chest cavity and that allows the lungs to expand once again. And the ones, when the lungs get expanded, it, receives, it, it draws the air from, uh, from outside to the lungs. So that is how because of the chest cavity, because of the ribs, as well as because of the floor of the chest cavity, which is called diaphragm, we able to draw gases inside and outside. Okay, this is very important. <coughs> and when somebody is not able to breathe normally because of some accident and from certain other reason, you know the paramedics or the first aid people they suppose to push the person's chest cavity like one, two, three, four. They put both of their hands on the chest, somewhere below the ribs, something somewhere below the rib cage, and they start pushing it. One, two, three, four. And why in the movies you might remember that you can see what that person is doing at that time because the person is not breathing. That means it will not be able to transport important gases to every cell. The person will be dead in four or five minutes if he or she is not able to breathe again. So somebody is helping the lungs from outside. So by putting the pressure, like mm, mm, I said, by putting the pressure, somebody is actually contracting the lungs and releasing the lungs so that it can inhale the gases from the air so person will get a chance to survive a little bit uh, to get extra time for the person so the paramedics can come so if any accident happens that activity might save the person's life because it assists and help the breathing okay the other thing is respiratory system the respiratory system which is made up of different organs Luckily, yes, on, it's very simple. So, so, different organs are present in the respiratory system. Whenever we will be studying a system, the first thing you should know as an introductory biology student that how many different organs are present in that system. You should know the organs. First thing, first thing first. The second thing you should know how these organs connect with each other, their sequence and their function. And the last but not the least, which I might be asking, what are different diseases associated with that system? So for the respiratory system, we need to know, it contains nose, consists of nose, it starts from here. We took our nose very much granted. And you know, we insert our nose on other people's matter as well. We took it very much granted, but it is serving such a wonderful purpose. Other than that, that we have misquoting, we are misquoting nose as a some something which is you know related to our prestige something which is related to our, you know, ego. The nose is doing such a wonderful biological role, I will explain. 
the next part is the throat the next is the air passageway there is a channel there is a duct which is called air passageway and then there exists lungs so nose throat air passageway and then the lungs nose and then the throat air passageway and then the lungs these are the components of respiratory system and we will be studying about each uh, the function of the each of those components in the next session okay so it's time for the break and when we will uh, i will see you on the other side of the next session i will be talking about how these different organs uh, works together to execute the most important function of life which gives oxygen and expel carbon dioxide gas from humans okay so just take a break of 5 uh, minutes and uh, uh, we will be again in the next session to complete the second part of the lecture okay if you have any question about this lecture about this part you can ask that question right now if you have any question we you you can ask in the second session as well but just because we have some time so if you have uh, any question just help me to answer that thing to ask a question you need to unmute your mic and you can phrase it eras you want yes sir ji ji shabash i want to ask is there some link between the lungs and the heart i am asking this because my father had a heart attack in august and the doctor said ke unko cough nahi karni chahiye saans nahi zyada karni chahiye usse dil pe pressure aata hai ji ji bilkul wo physical pressure ki baat karte hain because the lungs and the heart they are neighbors they are they are neighbors so you know if your neighbor is making a lot of noise if your neighbor is like uh, creating lot of fuss you can technically experience lot of pressure so when they cough a lot the lungs like they get expanded contracted in a in a very you know weird way it can pushes the heart and if the heart is not normal unfortunately for a person if heart is not working in a in a normal way so it technically physically affected by the neighbor so that is how that is why the doctor is asking to reduce the other associated trouble let me record this session and uh, i will restart answering uh, that why heart is not good enough heart is good enough for the transportation of materials within the body but uh, it is it, it is it requires another mechanism or another system to draw gases from outside to inside the body and heart is not connected with the outside world the lungs are so that is why the heart is not able to uh, extract the gases from outside not able to communicate the things from outside so it is designed to, to transport materials within the one part of the body to the other and it is not safe frankly to expose your system to the environment and that is why the lungs can get infections very easily the virus is the bacteria present in the air because when you draw things in you are actually sending whatever things are present in the air right to your lungs so heart is more like a, in a, in a secure state and serving other things as well okay i am going to share my screen and to take you to the next phase of the things about the respiratory system i will going to explain you the different components of the respiratory system as well so the respiratory system as i told you is made up of nose throat air passageway nose throat air passage which is also called as air passageway it continues within each of the lungs it continues the air channels they divide and then divide and then divide and then divide and eventually produce a very small very very small uh, air channels and smaller structures called alveoli i will explain these things 
uh, with the, so the nose and then the throat the throat itself is consist of two things one is called pharynx the first part and then the larynx remember pharynx is the place which is common the pharynx is a place which is common between the two systems the one system we will be studying about the digestive system because whatever we are eating is also entering into our system from the mouth so the first junction where these two systems get separated is the pharynx wo jo hamare ek bade government official ne kaha tha na agar aap garam pani peete peete hain to virus jo hai wo aapke mete mein chala jayega to ye baat usi waqt tak durust hai jab tak ho sakti hai us waqt tak thodi si durust ho sakti hai agar wo virus pharynx mein maujood ho because upper isko upper respiratory tract system bhi kehte hain bhai ye wala virus yahan se infection shuru karta hai so this is i i'm just going slow so the other people can join us so the upper respiratory system or pharynx is a joint a combined part between the two system after that one vessel will take the things will take the food to the stomach and the other vessel enters into the larynx the larynx is also called as the voice box then it enters into a big channel called trachea is the air passage way the track air passage way is for everything else so trachea it divides and then divides and produce and, and keep on dividing within each of the lungs eventually ended up in grape like structures called alveoli <clears throat> you can see the floor of the chest cavity here as well can you see this muscular structure here this is called the diaphragm the ribs are present here the diaphragm is present at the floor so together they contract the lungs to expel the gases and when they release the pressure the gases move in okay so that is how it work the first thing the nose the nose is considered to be useless for the respiratory system it is supposed to be considered as just a passage way just an opening but it is not only just an opening for the respiratory system it's doing certain things the nose contains hairs as well as the mucus you can feel the liquid present within the nose as well two nostrils out there which contains hairs as well as a liquid they stay moist <clears throat> very important function but the, the important function nose is nose is doing number one the hair present within the nose trap the dust particles present in the air so that actually capture the dust particles present in the air so whatever the air is going whatever the air is going inside our lungs that air will be free from the dust particle second you know the the wetness and the moist conditions of the nose allows the dirt particles it allows the dirt particle to settle down and trap with the help of the hairs out there when the air travels within the nose it helps the air to manage its temperature near to the body temperatures for example if the temperature of the air is less than 37 if there are winters the air is very cool out there the body is at 37 degree centigrade so while the air moves through the nose its temperature gets warmer so it it will be accommodated well within our bodies this is another job and after that the air enters into the first part which is a common place called the pharynx i told you pharynx is called throat it has two openings of the two systems the one is the esophagus esophagus take the food to the stomach the other is trachea and trachea will take the oxygen and the other gases into the lungs this is a very important part 
of the throat and i just took a picture for you in order to explain the pharynx and the larynx well okay let me show you the picture of the trachea since it's like a common place for two systems it's like a common place for the two systems look at that uh, can you see the larynx here so from the nose the air enters into the throat and throat is like a common place for the two systems okay this one the darker one this the darker one this stuff this is the first entry of the respiratory system this is the first entry of the respiratory system and this part is called as the larynx okay this channel here takes the food to the stomach so this is a lung tract and this one is the food tract both of these things both of these things has a common junction in the throat when you are eating something the food is not supposed to enter into the respiratory system it will cause big big trouble but when you are respiring when you are trying when you are breathing so during breathing the air should go to the respiratory system in order to secure that entry into the nervous system this this picture is a little bit complicated so do, you, are, you are not supposed to memorize this picture or remember this picture. just try to understand the structure i want you to be very clear on this in order to secure the entry of the things within the respiratory system it is covered with the help of that lid this blue color lid it's called epiglottis this lids cover the larynx this one when you engulf something when you when you when you are eating and trying to swallow something the food from your mouth goes directly into the esophagus and then the stomach in that time the lid the epiglottis serves the purpose to protect that nothing should go into the respiratory system it covers acts as a lid when you are breathing and not eating at that time the lid is open and this allows the gases this allows the gases to enter into the respiratory system now imagine if you are eating as well as talking because the talking requires respiration the talking requires breathing it requires the opening of the air passageway the talking requires you to 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 open the lid so the air can rush out of your lungs and can create sound so when you are talking and yet and you are eating as well so while swallowing if you are trying to talk at that time some food particle or a liquid particle might enter into the lung into that trachea at that time the lungs try to contract rapidly to expel that thing out and that results in the cough in the severe cough at that time another important structure present here they called vocal cords here in the larynx ye bahut zyada detail mein aap ke syllabus mein nahi hai but just it's very important knowledge and you should know vocal cords are like flaps they are like flaps which which can vibrate so when lungs contract and expel the gas out from this place the vocal cord flaps vibrates and it can create sound the vocal cords are responsible of every sound which we are creating so we are creating sound with the help of the vocal cords using the air present in the lungs <coughs> the next our cheeks our tongue and our lips they molded the sound to create words and languages 
if you try to speak without moving your cheeks tongues or lips you will not be able to create any word it will just be a sound only the sound so with the help of the cheeks we able to like mold that sound to create words <clears throat> so that is how it works okay <clears throat> let me take you to the next part after the larynx it enters into the trachea trachea is the main air passageway which taking the air into the lungs nature <clears throat> provide c shape cartilaginous bony structures into the walls of that trachea to keep that trachea open so if you remember ladko ko ye batao the boys know that thing if they used to go out for shopping wo log jo phephde bechte hain phephda ke liye ji gaay bakriyon ke gaay bhainso ke phephda ke liye ji ho na kabhi kabhi purchase kiye ho dukaan pe ladke hote hain jahan par wo siri paaye bikte hain na us dukaan pe jahan par unhone siriyan tarteeb se lagayi hoti hain and you might remember the eyes of the those डेड बकरास एज वेल बड़ी उदास आंखें होती हैं उनकी उस टाइम वो जो उन्होंने लंग्स लटकाए होते हैं ना वहां पे फेफड़े लटकाए होते हैं उसमें विंड पाइप के अंदर यू कैन सी दाइट कार्टिलेजनस सी शेप स्ट्रक्चर कुदरत ने वो इसलिए रखे हैं सो आवर एयर पैसेज वे शुड ऑलवेज बी केप्ट ओपन वो कलेप्स ना कर जाए लाइक इफ समी पुशिस यू इट विल नॉट गोइंग टू कलेप्स द एयर पैसेज वे इट शुड बी केप्ट ओपन इस तरह की ओपनिंग जब वेन ट्रैकिया डिवाइड सिमिलर सी शेप स्ट्रक्चर आर प्रेजेंट देयर वेन इट डिवाइड फर्दर एंड फर्दर एंड फर्दर इट इज रिप्लेस विद अदर बोनी स्ट्रक्चर एंड इवेंचुअली विद नथिंग बट दीज थिंग्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू कीप दीज थिंग्स ओपन सो द एयर कैन गो विदाउट एनी ट्रेवल टू द वेरी इन साइड ऑफ द लंग्स वेन ट्रैकिया डिवाइड इट प्रोड्यूस ब्रोकस so one trachea further one trachea this is one trachea it divides to produce bronchus and each bronchus enters into the lungs so there are c shaped cartilaginous structures present in the air passage way which helps it to stay open when the bronchus enters into the lungs it start dividing dividing and dividing and dividing and eventually ended up in this grape like structure so at the very end of each of these channels there exists the grape like structure so our lung is made up of these grape like structure they called alveoli these grape the white grapes these these grape like structure are called as alveoli so when the air from the outside from the nose into the thorax uh, sorry into the throat from the pharynx to the larynx from the larynx to the trachea from trachea to the bronchus from bronchus eventually ended up here these are called air sacs as well our lung is made up of these alveoli they are spongy in nature that is why our lungs are spongy in nature these alveoli is surrounded by the blood vessels surrounded by the blood vessel the blue blood vessel means the blood vessel which contains deoxygenated blood ganda khun deoxygenated blood the blood with the carbon dioxide gas and with less oxygen it came from all parts of the body to here and that is a place where carbon dioxide gas is thrown into the air sac and oxygen is taken up by the blood so in the diagram the color of the vessel is changed from blue to the red so the red means oxygenated blood saaf khoon ye wo ganda saaf wo wala matlab nahi hai the blue means the oxygen with sorry the blood with more oxygen the blood with more oxygen and sorry the blue means the blood with more carbon dioxide gas and less oxygen it is collected 
from all parts of the body to the heart and from the heart it enters into the lungs like this so it's called as the deoxygenated blood the blood with less oxygen with more carbon dioxide gas it present in a network over the alveoli and you know now the alveoli contains what it contains oxygen so carbon dioxide gas from this blood is thrown into the air sac oxygen present within the air sac is absorbed and the color of the vessel is changed from blue to the red and the red means oxygenated blood the blood with more oxygen and less carbon dioxide gas and that is sent back to the heart and then from the heart it's sent back to the rest of the body so this is the good blood or the blood with oxygen is then supplied to all other parts of the body so from the nose from the air to the alveoli there is no blockage there should be no blockage the air passageway should be kept open so the exchange of gases should occur here the exchange of gases occurs here what is the exchange of gases the carbon dioxide gas from the blood is thrown out into the air sac and oxygen from the air sac is absorbed and you can guess what will happen after the carbon dioxide gas from the air sacs from the alveoli is collected into the bronchus from the bronchus it goes to the trachea from the trachea and from the nose okay so if one more thing you need to remember when you ask doctor used to tell you that you need to breathe from the nose when you are breathing from the nose you are using the function of the nose as well as i told you earlier in the first part in this lecture in this session if you are taking you can breathe from the mouth as well but when you breathe from the mouth you will not be able to filter the air you will not be able to help the air to get moistened because when the air get moistened it is much easier to exchange the gases at the end so that is why it is important to take the breath to take a breath from the nose and you can expel it from anywhere you can expel it from mouth as well that is how the respiratory system works together so within the air sac this is the air sac i told you the blood capillaries so carbon dioxide gas enters into the alveoli and oxygen is captured by the hemoglobin present in the blood and then this oxygen is taken and supplied to the other parts of the body if something bad happens to the air passageway very simple very logical if something bad happens to the air passageway if the blockage is there you can guess if the air passageway is smaller it is difficult to breathe people will find shortening of breath asthma might be there if the damage of alveoli is there it is not good for the exchange of gases the people have other diseases and if some viral infection is there so we should include covid-19 here along with the sars it's a family of the same virus if a virus is there present in the air it enters into our respiratory system it start living on the air passageway it start living on the cells of the lungs you can guess what will happen it will start consuming the air passageway start destroying the air passageway so it is getting bad and bad with the passage of time to take a breath and to use your respiratory system it leads to pneumonia and the destruction of the lungs if the lungs are not working and your body is trying to recover you need extra time for the survival because if the lungs is, lungs are not working the person will be dead so what doctors are doing at that time they use artificial respiratory system called ventilators ye term aapne suni hogi bahut zyada they use artificial respiratory systems which helps our body and act like lungs since the lungs are not working the air passageways are destroyed 
so the artificial supply artificial ventilators can help the person to live for 10 days or 20 days so the person can fight back and can recover its lungs in the meanwhile okay so <clears throat> that's it for the respiratory system so if you have any question i i wish it helps you and clarify your understanding about the respiratory system there's a lot of things which might be a little bit more than your syllabus but that is fine knowledge is always good to have it okay if you have any question if you believe you should ask something then please speak it right now if you want to ask like uh, uh, on the text box you can use the chat box as well but it is better to speak okay so the floor is now open for your questions before the times run out okay please unmute, unmute your microphone and start asking your questions so i can i i, I able to answer you anybody about the respiratory system okay can i get you again okay please be very quick we don't have enough time for your questions sir main ye puchna cha raha hu ki sir aisa lag raha hai ki jaise oxygen jo hai ya air jo hai usko zyada time tak lungs mein rehna chahiye taaki properly absorb ho sake to kya jo inhalation aur exhalation hai in dono ka time ek jitna hota hai ya time mein farak hota hai actually inhalation ya exhalation jo dono options hain ye dono options lungs nahi jante they don't know the lungs don't know ke what the lungs is doing i mean wo kaun si gas bahar phenk rahe hain kaun si gas ko absorb kar rahe hain they just contracting and relaxing kaun si gas bahar ja rahi hai kaun si aa rahi hai wo depend karti hai kitna exchange ho gaya hai lungs ke andar for example the nitrogen present in the air and the nitrogen present in the lungs are same you know why because nitrogen is not consumed within the lungs only oxygen is consumed so if you are working in a slow pace and not consuming enough oxygen ultimately less oxygen will be entering into the air if you are working hard and you are consuming and absorbing lot of oxygen from the, from the alveoli ultimately more oxygen will rush in and you need to remember one more thing that it depends on the number of alveoli over there if we have more alveoli more function available the exchange will be easier it's not about the time the number of alveoli when we smoke we are destroying our alveoli over the period of time and that is why for example the capacity of our lungs will reduce from 100% to 90% from 90% to 80% and then less. okay okay who's next so if we don't have enough questions this ka matlab ye hua ke i have explained the respiratory system well but even if you have certain questions you can write those question or ask in the next session as well to me okay i will uh, edit that uh, lecture for you and i will be putting that lecture to the youtube as well okay